Enjoy the Church Podcast. Christian, here we are again. Here we are. Sitting at the black... This is not a round table. We're sitting at the square table. We're having a square table session with Sandra Cuesta. And it's good to have you with us, Sandra. And uh, Sandra's going to tell us her story today, her pre-Christ life and how she encountered Christ and got born again and how the Lord's helping her walk out life today. And so, yeah, it's good. So I'm excited. I like doing these on Saturday, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm we're right after prayer, right after intercession. I'm all quickened on the inside and not wore out from all day long and doing yeah, it on a true. Wednesday night. So yeah, I, I'm a little fresher in the morning time. Hey man, you a little fresher in the morning time than the evening. Oh yeah. 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 These millennials, they're fresher at evening than they are in the morning. So it's yeah. the it's a win win, I guess, or a give and take something. Okay. Yeah. All right, Sandra. Here we are. Yeah. I'm gonna give are. you that funny look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are we about to find out? No. Yep. This is absolutely <laughs> me and Christian out. don't bite and this doesn't hurt. And so yeah, we just wanna hear about your story because like on Sunday morning, it's it's we don't it, it, it's hard to find out. It, beyond the surface of who we are not that we're being fake i think we've created a good culture where we come in here and we're real yeah and not fake but it's time wise everything's going on in reality is when we come together corporately it's about him yeah. and yeah. when we make yeah. it about him then he makes it about us he comes and ministers to us after we minister to him and so it's just good uh, we're getting a lot of traction a lot of mm-hmm. i see a lot of comments on whatsapp man i didn't know that about nikki mm-hmm. i didn't know that about tracy i didn't know that about patricia and so uh we're beginning to learn one another and what what really instigated all this is when we understand one another and we understand where one another's coming from then we we can relate better relationally in the present because now we know where someone's coming from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and instead of things being quirks or things that kind of irritate us, now we understand and know that this is where they've come from, so that's probably why and, and I probably need to grow up. <laughs> Amen. So, it's good to come to a place of understanding and so yeah, we're going to understand Sandra today. Amen. Let's do it. So, I'm going to turn you loose. Let us, oh, so growing up, let us know what, what kind of shaped you as a child coming, growing up, uh, maybe experiences with your parents, ex- whatever. I know a little bit cause I've known you for a long time. And yeah. so let's just, let's just let Joy Church know who Sandra is and where you come from. Okay. Okay. Well, <clears throat> growing up, I guess I start with my parents. Um, they were, my dad was like the macho okay guy all right and typical mom, of that generation yeah, yeah. My, my mom was gorgeous big boys don't uh, cry she was a beautiful yeah. lady uh, uh-huh. there was four of his kids uh now when i was young my parents had um principles character they didn't drink they didn't party they didn't do any of those things okay uh but um, they were believers? Both, i'm sorry is that because they were believers uh, they are believers. Um, my, my dad went to church, which I didn't know this until okay. a few years ago, actually, before he passed away, was that they, his mother played the piano in church. They were at church all the time. Okay. Now, his dad did not go to church, just the mom and the kids. Okay. Um, my dad lost his dad at a very early age uh, due to a tragedy. And so that started... Uh, my dad's brokenness, I guess okay. you would say. And then my mom, uh, there was like eight siblings in her family, but her brokenness very much came from her dad. Um, I never liked my grandfather on my mom's side. He was very mean. He was very abusive. I didn't know why, and I just didn't like to be around him because you never knew when he was going to like blow yeah. up. Yeah, mm-hmm. You know, all kinds of... And you wouldn't know why. It was just everybody standing around and having a conversation, and then he goes off the deep end. Uh, so I didn't like. So it's you my... and four siblings, and you're growing up. Mm-hmm. What's 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 going on with parents that um, that, that shifted? So what shifted was there was always trouble. My my parents were both broken, so there was always trouble in the marriage. They never ever could come together. 
and be one. So growing up in my never house, sought out help or anything like that. No, yeah, that, I don't. That think comes from dad the, being macho. Yeah, the pride. The pride. <clears throat> um, so uh, my home was very chaotic. Um, uh, they fought a lot. Uh, we would get in the middle of it. We would get hurt. I mean, it was like fights, like they were bad. I mean, everything that was on the walls, it would be on the floor broken. My dad, my dad might get mad and shove the chair out the glass window. Um, they were very physical with one another. They were very abusive with us. Um, they didn't know how to make the punishment fit the crimes that we committed. Mm -hmm. um, there was never any, um, like, uh, what is the word? I'm like, like um, with us kids, it was always focused on what you did wrong. Uh, so we were always striving to do what was right. I mean, like I would bring a stack full of books home from school and try to do my studies and do all that. But be, to be honest, I would read a book and... Now, um, question, how old are you at this age? I'm probably elementary age. Later uh, elementary age? And, yeah. See, yeah. He, I mean, yeah. Now you're trying to perform to please your parents. Oh, yes, I've been. Maybe agreed. hoping that in my performance of pleasing them, maybe they'll stop getting mad and fight. Well, and then also, if you made bad grades, um, you were in big trouble. Always focused on the F, not the four A's that you made. Right. Uh, not what you, that, that was our whole life, is that it was just boom, 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 what you did wrong. It was never any validation of, yeah. you did great in No this. affirmation, no, no validation, no. no confirmation of how no. awesome you are. Yeah. No, I was never told I was awesome. <laughs> I'm still not told that, so that's fine. Okay. But. Well, yeah, you are. Jesus thinks well, you're awesome. Well, I mean, in, in my family. Pastor Rod thinks you're awesome. In my Christian family. thinks you're awesome. awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about in, in my family. That was the way that it was raised. Gotcha. I think that's because that's the way they were raised. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this. You said tension between mom and dad fighting. What you said abuse. What kind of abuse are we talking about? Are we talking about just ain't the, the, the outbursts of wrath coming out towards you? And um, you've told me a little bit of story about your mom and there was a lot kind of, of different kinds <clears throat> of abuse. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, pornography in our home, uh, so that did cause a lot of things. I won't. I don't know if I should go into it or not. Uh, my my dad has passed away, okay. but my mom is still living. Right. But got you. Um, they were both both abusive. I mean, like. I, I've been I've been whipped with a knife. I've had a spanking with a knife. I've never forgotten that. Okay. Um. Just a lot of um. Just there was sexual abuse. There was physical abuse. Um. So traumatic abuse, but also traumatic. It, it, I, I, you've told me a little story. Just a lot of traumatic, uh, discipline. Very mm -hmm. traumatic discipline. Mm -hmm. And always never nothing right. Never, we, mm -hmm. you could never do anything that was good enough. Mm -hmm. And so how did that, I mean, evidently you bring the books home, you were trying to please dad. How else did that affect you? Uh, well, I couldn't concentrate in school. That was what I was going to say. When I would bring my books home mm -hmm. to study or whatever, I would study. I would try really hard. But afterwards, I couldn't remember a thing. I, I could not tell you what I read in that book. I could not I could not concentrate because of all of the chaos so, in my home. So they cr basically created an environment where their daughter is walking on eggshells all the time. Uh, and I hate I, that word right there. I was told by my mom all the time, Sandra you are walking on eggshells not knowing that she's the one that's created that environment yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. but okay. we had rules i mean i'm a rule keeper we had rules you kept the rules if you didn't keep the rules then you you know you got had smacked to, back into line huh or, well it was it we yelled or yeah well no we had it all we got yelled at we got grounded we got spanked we had to stand got whooped with a knife I've had a spanking with a knife, yes. Okay. Uh, I've I've also had spankings with both my parents that were, you know, that left big whelps uh, over stupid stuff like going barefoot in the wintertime outside or, you know. So what I'm like hearing is Sandra's inundated and submerged into this culture, this family culture and environment 
of 100% negativity, 100% rage, anger, outbursts, 100% rules, regulations, and the law, Mm -hmm. and absolutely void of grace and mercy and confirmation and affirmation. Is that, am I explaining that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't remember ever, I mean, it's not that my parents didn't love us, but it, but the love was not really strong. Look, there's my dad not a never book. Never told yeah. me that he loved me. That comes from the he, macho deal, yeah. Yeah, but he did show me in you know ways, I guess you would yeah. say. But that, it was very twisted. I, I grew up very in a very twisted atmosphere. It was yeah. very twisted. So okay. all of us were twisted. Sorry, all of us were twisted. All yeah. of us kids were twisted. Yeah. How did it affect your your, your siblings? Uh, well, any of them come out? Uh. No, my, well, my older brother was murdered. Um, wow, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was, yes, he was murdered by neighbors that lived across the street from us. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, but uh, the thing was, was my brother was very messed up. He was very into drugs. And um, the the people that lived across the street from us was probably even worse off than we were. So, uh, he, he liked, uh, uh, one of their daughters that was way too young for him. And they were just the type of people you didn't mess with them. They'd just take you out. And that's what they did. They murdered wow. my brother. Okay. Moving forward. You said elementary school. How, how are uh, Sandra's growing up? She's becoming a teenager. She's mm-hmm. in high school. How, you know, you're, you're maturing, you're growing. Where are you at now in high school? By the time I got into high school, I'll just do a little bit of history. Okay. Is that we went to church till I was in the fifth grade. There was still trouble, so my parents got us out of church, which was the worst thing they could have ever done. Was And so everybody didn't go to church anymore. You didn't serve the Lord anymore. You didn't read the Word. You didn't do any of those things. So uh, we, by the time I was in high school, I was pretty wild. Okay. Um, promiscuous, drank, partied, um, ran were, around with were the you la- Were you loud? Um. I was. Did you get loud well, when you partied? I want to know. I want to no. know. I want to know. <laughs> no. Did you get loud and rowdy no, when you partied? No. <laughs> I really wasn't loud, but the times that I was loud is if, um, because I didn't mess with anybody, but you didn't mess with me either. So you you took on some of the characteristics of mom and dad. Oh, big time. Oh, okay. I could take care of myself. Okay. And I and I would if you, dynamite if comes you, in small packages. If huh? you pushed me into a corner, I would come out. You're gonna get it with no problem. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, a lot of people always took me as being not being a person that would retaliate back and would just would would take whatever they okay. did out. Okay. And um. No, yeah, no, their eyes would be about that big because I could, I could make some noise, and I, I did. So, I would defend so myself. pretty much from an environment, a, a family dynamic like that, you pretty much morphed into what is expected. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Just and probably promiscuous, <laughs> rebellious, yeah. I'm going to do what I want to do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. And if you ever back me in the corner, I'm going to scratch your eyes out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you, you, high school, you graduate? When did no, you? No, I didn't graduate. Okay. I did not graduate. Okay. Uh, like I said, I was pretty wild. So, by the time I was probably, I was thinking today, I was probably 14 or 15. I think it was 15. I got um, mixed up with somebody I shouldn't have. Older? Um, much older. He was six years older than me. Okay. Uh, he had already been married um, and was in the process of getting a divorce, um, had a child. I think his child and mine was born around the same times. Okay. But uh, he was also pretty much exactly like my parents, very abusive, very controlling, very manipulative. Um, That's what you're used to. Oh, yeah. So you, you're drawn to what is oh, yeah. comfortable. You're drawn to what you know. Yeah, and to the first person and that paid me any attention and acted like he really loved me, which wasn't true, but... Um, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, guys, yeah, they're real good at that. hmm Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So when did you get married? I was married by the time I was 16 and had... To a, this man? hmm Okay. Yeah. How long did that last? Uh, it lasted seven years. Really? Yes, but... Now, how many kids do you have? 
I have I have two. Did you have any with this guy? I had one. Yes, that one. was my first child. By the your, time your, I was 16, I was pregnant one. with his child. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And so he's six years older than you at this time. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. All right. And so how did that go? Seven years married to this guy? It was crazy. Just, it was just as, <clears throat> it was more abusive, more twisted than, you know, home life. Okay. Um. So, yeah. Okay. So into that marriage, where you go now? Which was seven uh, years would that would make you be about twenty three years old, still a young, young twenty three. Yeah. Right? Um yes. Um so that marriage lasted for seven years, but there was so much separation, you know, in between that it, it, I really wouldn't call it like a marriage. So you split up, come back together, split oh, up, come yeah. back. Whenever he got a wild hair, he would split up, go move in with somebody else. I would go on and try to make a new life, and then he would just like Pull he didn't back. like that. Yes, yeah. didn't like that, and he did that for years uh, in my life, and um, I didn't realize until you came into my life at FC about breaking uh, soul ties. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was a very sick soul tie, but I just could not get away from this person. Um, so uh, I, I finally did through one of your teachings about breaking soul ties. Some bridges need to be burned, and yep, uh, so absolutely, I, I, I burned Whole that bridge. And as a matter of fact, when you were preaching that and teaching that, I was right in the middle of that. Um, even though I was married. To the man I'm married to now, he had, um, we weren't, we had trouble in our marriage and, and lo and behold, guess who calls me on the phone? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I, can you see all the spiritual stuff working behind oh, the scenes and all time. this? But it yeah. took me a long time to see it. Yeah. So that soul tie, uh, God knew everything that was going to happen. And he knew that you were going to help me to get freedom from this person because he would not let me go on and make a life for myself. Even yeah. though I tried, he would just pop back up. And that is there was so such, demonic, man. Yeah. Since there was so much brokenness and that's how much he thought of himself. That's how, I mean, he... Narcissist. Yes. So, um... I'm going to go do what I want to do, but if ever you decide to go do what you want to do, I'm going to... Yeah, pull it's on, that pull I on. don't want you, but I don't want nobody else to have you either. Here you go. Yes. That's a typical so narcissist. I broke that soul tie, and I totally burned that bridge. Come on. Burned it. Burned it. Boom. <laughs> burned it to the ashes. Burned it. Yes. Okay. You got free from this guy. Yes. Okay. So how did that help you in your marriage with Falcon? Oh, probably didn't help at all. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> probably didn't help at all. But, um, you know, Cuesta, my husband I have now, has, you know, he has his issues. But uh, it just took me a very long time to see that really and truly that he was the love of my life. Because I couldn't get rid of the soul tie. I couldn't get that. Right. So uh, there was a lot of damage. I mean, like in the beginning when I met my husband, the way that I met him was I worked for him. Um, and I talk about this a lot because I want to remember it. I might cry as y'all have You're to You're fine. Uh, I had applied for a job, and he was the man, one of the managers there and um i was just sitting in the chair and all the managers come walking through the door and he just stood out like a neon sign i go oh my gosh who in the world is that oh and then he's i go a hottie, huh? oh he was i'll have to show you pictures he was oh. he was very tall big and he sexy was, he was he was adorable <laughs> i go who is that and then i go oh no such luck and um so they call my name. I, I was hired by him. I was in his group. So I thought, oh, this is cool. So uh, did, he didn't pay me any mind at all. Uh, I didn't even know he even noticed me for a very long time. But I noticed him. All the girls liked him. All of them Big liked sexy. him. Yes, they did. <laughs> so they all wanted to go with him. But uh, he finally got up enough nerve to ask me out. So, really? Yeah. So, so you I, were the lucky one, huh? I was. That's why I keep going. I go, oh, no such luck. And they go, yeah, because I used to always think, oh, it never happens to me, you know. So it did. It happened. So Okay. Mm-hmm. So tell us about that first date. 
Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, we didn't know the Lord. I didn't know. We neither right. never see the Lord. But he liked, uh, he drove this big old long white Cadillac oh, Eldorado. Okay? Eldorado. Uh, Got hubcaps the size of an 18-inch yeah, pizza. Yeah, it was a tank, but it was beautiful. <laughs> it was white on the outside, red on the inside. It had a moonroof, all that stuff. And, Did they have long horns on the front? No, no, but it could have. Okay. It could have. But it was so funny because I used to laugh at him because he didn't start driving until he was like 31. Really? Yeah. So there's 11 years difference between he and I. But uh, he could not drive. He could not park that car at all that <laughs> night. I think he tried and pulled in and out of the par the parking place like 10 times, and he never got it in there right. And I go, Oh my goodness, if he can't drive his You know, car, it's I short of a miracle trying to park an Eldorado. <laughs> I never had any issues, but I thought since he can drive Did it, you I, drive that Eldorado? I drove the heck Come out on. of it, yes, and I never had any trouble parking <laughs> Did you have to have a booster seat? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I can't see you driving in like a 1978. I love that car. That was my favorite. That was my favorite car. I loved it. Awesome. Okay, so you go out, and so what? What led to the I do the the proposal moment? How long did y'all date? We actually lived together for three years. We dated oh, two times. Fornicators, huh? We yeah, I'm yeah we were fornicators. Yes. Well, like I said, I lived a very promiscuous <laughs> life. So uh, anyway, um, we went on two dates, and then the second date, we were never we were together all the time after that. So okay, he met my kids and. Now, um, how many children do you have this time? Uh, we don't have any kids together. Okay. He raised my kids as his own. My uh, first daughter is by my first husband. Like okay. I said, I lived a very promiscuous life. Tell us for a second, into, third. I only have two children. Okay. So the second one was born uh, by a trisk, a one-night thing okay. when I lived in okay. Waco. Okay. Um, my daughter never... Nicole, it was Nicole. Uh, she doesn't know her, her dad. Her father. Okay. No. Okay. She uh -huh. only knows Cuesta as her dad. Okay. So he just brought them in and just loved yes, on them. He and said he would never marry somebody who couldn't have children or who already had children, and he did both. That was till he I met you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he bit off caused more him to break the rules, huh? Yeah, he could bit off. Yeah. He bit off more than he could chew when he, yeah, took her with me, but he stayed. Okay. So, how long y'all been married now? Mm, we've been together 46 years, so we've been married 43. Wow. Mm -hmm. 43 years. Amen. Tell us a little bit about growing old with Falcon, Cuesta. Yeah, well, a lot of time has passed by very fast. I mean, I'm not going to say... We now, did he go have... by Falcon back then? He's always gone by Falcon, okay? But I'm weird. I like names, and I love the name Cuesta. And I like... His name is Lorenzo Falcon Cuesta. So I love Lorenzo. I love Cuesta. I'm not crazy about Falcon. He liked it, um, but... Lorenzo Falcon Cuesta. Wow. That's his name. What That's a, a cool name. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, like, yeah, that makes me want to get on a Harley and like take over. <laughs> yeah. So I like uh, Lorenzo. He doesn't like Lorenzo. And okay. I love the last name Cuesta. So since I worked for him, I called him Mr. Cuesta at that time. Uh, but I just dropped the Mr. Now that he and became Honey Bunny, you just called him Cuesta. Cuesta. Yeah. Cuesta uh, or Babe, one or the other. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about. 43 well, years of marriage. Uh, it's been, uh, there's a lot of good times. There were a lot of bad times. Um, we've, number one, you know, my parents could never come together. Uh, so let me, let me ask you this question. I mean, oh, was, was he like your parents or was he different? Um, he's, he's different. Uh, so he's so not you learned from the first marriage, I'm not going to get in with someone that, that's physically abusive now. You're right. Okay. Now. All right. He's not uh, physically abusive until he got dementia, but right. you know, that's just the disease. But yeah. um, no, he mm. was awesome uh, in many, many ways, but he's also broken in many ways. So uh, a lot of the things that caused trouble in our marriage was, uh, number one, is we are two hard heads. Number two was that we both wanted our way. Uh, number three was we were both very broken, even though we cared very much for one another, we're very broken. 
Um, I did a lot of things before we ever got married that probably pretty much broke him. Um, so I made a lot of mistakes because I was very angry. I'd already made up my mind that nobody was ever going to treat me the way everybody else had treated me. So I just do it to you first. Mm. That was kind of like the way I was. So I pretty much broke his heart. I don't know why he married me. He just See, I had an issue with that growing up. Uh-huh. And that was, I'm going to leave you before you get a chance to leave me. Yeah, or, I, or you know, I don't care, blah, blah, blah. And that's blah, just you me know. being in control. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I was going to make sure that I was going to be, like, in control of how I was treated or whatever. But the other thing that really was a big wedge in our life was I never met any of his family ever. I knew nothing about his background growing up. Uh, he was very um, secretive with his life. Um, wow. Yeah. So you didn't meet no He did not want me to meet them. And to be honest, all those did years. Did you ever meet them? No. All of really? Those, no, he did not want me to meet oh, them. Oh, wow. Uh, but yeah. I always thought it was because he was really deep down ashamed of me. That's what I thought. Uh, but that's not. Uh, I've learned that's not the case. But, you know, if you're left to fill in the lines or the words, you'll fill them in yourself. Now, I could be a little humorous on these things. But Go ahead. That's like, you got married, but you didn't have to bring in in-laws. No, I didn't. No in-laws. <laughs> and, yeah, no, no in-laws. Mm-mm. That seems like it's, it's a little odd, but it could be a huge mm-hmm. blessing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and at first, I didn't really have a problem with it because I would think in my mind about how he treated me. Uh, how he stepped in to be a father to my kids uh, who didn't really have fathers. Even my oldest daughter, he was a deadbeat dad. So let me ask, where do you think the uh, you automatically, your first default was, he's ashamed of me? I think that comes from your past? Oh, definitely, because I lived in shame. Uh, I mean, like I said, there was, there was not only physical abuse in my home, but there God, there was um, sexual abuse. Okay. So, um, you know, you always look at yourself as yeah. being um, less than. Right. Um, Even though he treated you totally opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He used to tell me all the time, you know, how pretty I was. I didn't believe him. Okay. <laughs> I did not believe him. I go, yeah, right. Mm, no. So... No, and mean, he finally got tired of it and didn't tell me that anymore. He got tired now, of it see, because that, I didn't receive it. That is, that is, that, that is so, I, I think we just need to stop right here. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody that's watching hear that. Mm-hmm. That yep. if we don't get healed on the inside, mm-hmm. what is happening in our present, which is appreciate the very thing you craved your whole life. I was getting it, but I didn't believe it. You were it. getting it, but you were, you didn't believe it because of the, and, and basically it goes, the, the, the telltale is, is you never got healed on the inside. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, and I, I'm thankful that we're a community, we're a, a family that believes in inner healing and deliverance and wholeness. I believe that God is bringing us into a place of wholeness, even in this hour, even in this day. Mm -hmm. Uh, at this age Mm -hmm. that he needs a people that are complete and whole and i believe that inner healing and deliverance is just going to increase more and more and people are going to actually become whole yes and 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 come out of that brokenness um, and 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 able to enjoy yes the the validation Mm -hmm. It, it, it it's it's crazy that you couldn't enjoy and receive the validation that you wanted because yes. you didn't get it here, yeah. and your 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 default was to just reject it and not believe it. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't believe it. Wow! That's and you sad. knew he meant it, Falcon. Um, I'm thinking he did, but I mean, on the inside, I didn't believe it. Yeah, I didn't but, think. But just, I didn't think just those assessing things about Falcon and how he treated yes. you and mm-hmm. how he treated his kids. You know that it was authentic. Mm-hmm. But you couldn't believe that. Wow, no, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And so, yeah. 
And I will say, I'm just going to throw this out there uh, uh, concerning what you just talked about, about inner healing and deliverance and being community and relationships and stuff like that. That is the scariest thing for me. What? That. Inner healing? Uh, relationships. All of my relationships have been so still to this day. Yes, okay. I still I still struggle with it. Um, only I guess because um, every relationship I had was so twisted and so out of so line. So automatically, it's you scary can, to yeah. be in a relation in relationships that are so automatically happy. you come into relationship in in defensive mode. Yep in apprehensive mode, mm -hmm. in disbelief mode, mm -hmm. and that if anything positive happens in this relationship, it's just a sham. Wow. Okay. Struggle with that. Still struggle that today? today? Uh, not as much as I used to, to be okay. honest, but I still struggle with, um, I still struggle with just, Myself, I guess you would say. Everybody's going to watch this podcast, and they're just going to come in and start loving on you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be real standoffish because everybody's just going to like, ah, Zane, are you in? <laughs> oh, no. They've already been that way with me. I mean, like when I came back from my hiatus, the, everybody met me at the door. I was like totally amazed. I go, wow, this is going to be like the welcome in heaven, I can tell right now. Come because on. everybody, you weren't here. Wow. But everybody, like, was out in the foyer. Tim was the one who called. They go, hey, everybody, Sandra's back. She's here. And everybody, everybody came out there and gave me the most greatest hugs. And some of them were crying. And it was amazing. Hey, Amen. Awesome. 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 So where are you at today? I mean, we know Whoa, that Joy. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, yeah, let's help me out, Christian. We haven't, I haven't talked about how you heard, met Jesus yet. Like, what's oh, that story? thank you, Christian. Yeah. Well, okay. We, we got so, so wrapped in how great Falcon Jesus is. Actually goes back to my childhood because I mean, we went to church, we were mm -hmm. baptized, people came, you know, but it was a Baptist church. I knew nothing about the spirit or whatever. And then one time I went to a Pentecostal church. And now I know it was totally out of order, but I'm going, this is what church should be like. It should be fun. There was nothing boring about it, even though it was out of line or anything. I go, it should not be drab and boring. How old were you? Uh, I was a little girl, actually. So you didn't want when I, uh, What yeah. happened was, okay, so the way that I was, being wild, promiscuous, I did drugs, I, I, all that stuff, party, um, was um, I used to get myself in terrible messes. I mean, like life and death situations like being in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people and I knew to call on God because I knew that I was going to die and he would deliver me I would make all these promises to God oh, I'll yeah. do this I'll do that Lord if you just get me out of here and I'm telling you he would bam I would be out I mean my life was safe I one time I was so close to death that for three days I could not get that taste of death out of my mouth because I got into a horrible situation in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he saved mm -hmm. me out of it. I'd be in a shallow grave somewhere. And so uh, I, my heart was broken because I never kept any of those promises, even though he delivered me out of them. And um, I said, Lord, if I ever come to you anymore, I don't want it to be because I'm in trouble. When did that happen? And I need yeah. you to get me out. Um it happened more than once. It, it, this was um, probably before, I don't know if it was before I met uh, Cuesta or after, but I just said, I don't want it to be like that. I want it to mm -hmm. be just spontaneous and just time. And um, one day I was, uh, Cuesta and I were together. We weren't married yet. And I was in my bedroom watching Feed the Children. And I was very moved by it. I even dedicated some my rings or whatever to feed the children. But it was 
the Lord, what they were talking about and preaching about Jesus and everything. And I could just feel his presence in the room. And I just gave my heart to the Lord and I was crying. Mm. And my daughters came in the room. Sorry. I know You're you fine. Go ahead. You're and fine. My daughters came into the room at the same time and I was crying. They go, mommy, mommy, what's wrong? What was wrong? I said, come, come, come. They go, what, what, what? And I go, we're going to give our hearts to the Lord. And so mm. we did. We did. And, um, so we started going to church. Um, we went to a little church off of Barnesbridge Bridge Road in Garland. And uh, Pastor Hilton, James Hilton, was the pastor. And um, that's where it all basically started. Um, we gave our hearts to the Lord. We were So baptized. from a feed the children info. Oh, Come on. What about uh, Falcon? That's the first time I've ever heard anybody getting saved by feed the children. Yes, it was feed the children. Come on. It was. Uh, we just prayed that this morning. God, you, you can use what? anything. Uh, you really helped me with that because that was a very, uh, that was not radical. And I think the reason that it was done that way was because everything was so chaotic in my life. I needed something really peaceful. Mm. And, um, so, That's and good. it, and it was peaceful, but you know what, when I've told that testimony before, I've had people say, oh, you're not on fire. This is the way that it happened for me and my husband and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And you're not, you know, it, it, there was no fire to it, but, and I, I took that on as the truth that I'm not on fire. So I've really struggled with that, but, um, stop right there. Anybody that tells you that's immature because <laughs> yeah. I've been there. <laughs> yep. Yes. But pastor, you're the one that helped me with that. The last time that we talked, because you let me know that when you and pastor Tracy went to Brown, was it Brownsville revival? I, I went, I went to Brownsville. She didn't, but. Yeah. Uh, well, it was something that you were talking about, how y'all were not going to uh, let somebody else's experience take away from the experience that you had had with the Lord. But, uh, and I thought about it, well, that little, that little thing right there, that little experience with the Lord that I had, or that people made it little, mm -hmm. was a big thing because the Lord has never let me go since that day. I don't care if I stray or what happens. He will not take his hands off Come of me. And he on. never has. And um, so I love that. So how'd you meet Pastor Rod? How'd that happen? Uh, uh, well, me and my husband were going through some very bad times in our marriage. And we were in a, a in a synagogue called uh, Baruch Hashem. Uh, it was a Messianic Jewish congregation. And there was a big split there. And um, in the, my husband got very involved in that split, and I refused to. Mm -hmm. I had already learned. I'd already been through splits. You don't, don't get in the middle of them. Don't take sides. So I wouldn't do it. I didn't go to church. I didn't go there to the services. I didn't do anything. And so through that, I just never went back but my husband got very involved he got very hurt and he was very out of the church for 23 years till he stepped here but I did not I didn't go to church but I I, I wanted to but I I just didn't want to look for a church I'd been to several so one day I don't even know why I said this I go Lord I don't want I don't want a church I'm not I'm not looking for a church I want a class I want a class so I can grow and um, my brother, and everybody leave me alone. Yeah, and my, <laughs> you know what? The, the Lord totally answered that prayer. The next thing yeah. I know, my brother Your calls brother. me. He's going to FC, okay. and my brother doesn't call me. You know, and I'm going, "What's up?" And he goes, "Well, I've started this class." <laughs> so I go, "Yeah, well, hmm, uh, what what's it about?" And he started telling me. So it was the supernatural class of uh, Bill Johnson and Pastor Rod was teaching it and he would call me every Sunday night and tell me about it. And, and I go, well, what, what's the problem you have with it? And he goes, I don't know. And I go, well, it's He's in the Bible. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming, but I got a problem with everything. Yeah, he on. was really, yeah, he was really struggling with the, you know, the angel feathers and the <laughs> manifestations, all this stuff. And I go, but it's in the Bible. It's the book of Acts. I said, it's like the book of Acts coming alive. Yeah. And so finally I said, um, where is it? What time is it? I'm coming. And so I went, I never, I never missed one of those classes. It was the 
scariest thing I've ever yeah, been coming Yeah, because you had to live it out. You had to live out yes, the supernatural. I had never stepped out and Do you know, I, you know those little forms I made us fill out of us stepping out into the supernatural? You had to write your testimony down that week. I still got a stack of those about this thick of everybody stepping out wow. and doing the supernatural. Yeah, I did. I stepped Praying out. Praying for the sick. I seeing them healed on the did streets. a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And it also helped me um, in my job mm-hmm. uh, to, because uh, I worked in a workout center for women and you had to be very personable. I was always very shy. If you didn't speak to me first, I did not speak to you. I just had issues with that. Uh, mm-hmm. If you spoke to me, I, that kind of, you know, let the guard down. And so I could. But if you didn't, I, I couldn't. But you had to be personal. You had to know their names. You yeah, had to, yep. you know, uh, be glad to see them when they came in the afternoon. You had to be, you know, encouraging for them and stuff. So um, that helped me a lot to stand out because I prayed for people I would have never prayed for. I hugged people. I, I, and I didn't do it just to a certain people. I did it to all of them. I greeted all of them. I learned their names. I hugged them. I gave them a genuine hug. And um, when I left there, that was one of the things that one of the ladies told me. Actually, there were people there that I never thought would be receptive to a hug. And if I didn't get to hug them that day, they would come to me and get a hug. And then uh, one of the ladies there told me when I was leaving, she goes, well, I just want to tell you. She said, you know that hug you gave me every day? And I go, yeah. Yeah. And she goes, well, I just want to tell you that was the only hug I got every day. Wow. Yeah, so that was pretty awesome. Supernatural hugs. Yes, I love them. Come on. I like to give them. Now, I'm going to tell a story about Sandra. Uh Uh-oh. All right, let's go. uh, And it's part of Joy Church, and that's when we were uh, at Spanish Courts. And you, you remember coming to Mine and Tracy's house and sitting down like, I just don't know what. God's called me to be and what he's called me to do. And I don't know what my giftings is. And in that, mm-hmm. in my living, mine and Tracy's mm-hmm. living room, bam, the Holy Ghost shows up and reveals to you that you have a gift of healing. Mm-hmm. Amen. You know, you still got that gift of healing, right? I have to pull it out of you sometimes, but amen. That's all right. Sometimes but, I need to pull it But, but uh, we're, we're at Spanish courts and Sanders at this place where, Oh, we're going to pray again. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to pray again. For healing? We're, yeah. We're going to pray again. And I remember this Hispanic lady one time um, mm-hmm. had an issue with her leg. I mean, a serious issue with her leg. and It was her back. It was her back. It was she her was back. fixing to have operation for Fixing it. to have an operation. And it's like you, you prayed again. I don't know how many times you prayed, but... She got the Shabama. She got healed. She got Come the on. real deal. Holyfield got healed. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, so that's yeah. I, that's a story I remember about Sander. But Sander's been tracking with me and Tracy a long time, and it's been a, it's been a pleasure and an honor and a joy to, to, to run with you and to see all that God's doing in you, to see, uh, to be, for you to be a part of our lives and us to be a part of your life in seeing Falcon darkening the doors of a church again mm-hmm. got pictures of him with his hands up praising the lord he you answered you responded to an altar call a couple of months back and oil starts coming out of your hands and your husband sees the oil coming out of your hands and i remember you telling me man that's all he could talk about all day long and then he said this you're in the right place yes <laughs> i said well what do you think about this service he goes you're in the right place that's what he said that's so oh, awesome God. man yeah. that's so awesome and god, you know what god's so much bigger than dementia yeah yeah, yeah. god's yeah. spirit can move i don't yes. care if we think someone just is not receptive, doesn't even have the ability to receive, can I tell you the Holy Spirit can move in a person's life in a way in which they can receive that we really don't, it would have never even crossed our cognitive ability Mm -hmm. to even think that God could get someone's attention that way. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing that in uh, Falcon's life. And so it's, it's awesome to see that taking place. Amen. Yeah, he's doing some amazing things. So we got about a minute or two, uh, Chris. You got any questions? I got, yeah. So, um. You're fixing to get, this is pop test time. You can't. He's, no, he, he's teacher pop it's test. Not, uh, uh, pop quiz. <laughs> um, so um, I just want to ask you to, to give some wisdom to people that are listening. 
And so you can just speak to me or if you want to look at this camera right here, this one. Okay. Um, you've been married for 43 years now. That's amazing. And I know just from listening to people doing this podcast, talking with people, that being married is one of the things where you can have trouble in your marriage and nobody knows about it. You still show up to church. You still mm -hmm. look good on the outside. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to just assume that everybody watching this has a great marriage, you know, mm -hmm. because there's things that happen, things go on. And so it, I just want you to give a minute, two minutes of, of wisdom, what the Lord's shown you, how you've made it 40 plus years. Um, just whatever um, you feel the Lord telling you to share. Well, I I love being married. Um, not going to say that all these years I've known how to be married or mm -hmm. how to be submissive. I never grew up in a submissive home. I never grew up in a home that honored uh, or respected or any of that. So uh, I have Pastor Rod to thank for a lot of things that I've learned through the years. But... Um, I can honestly say when I got married, I didn't get married to have a divorce mm -hmm. or, or to be divorced or for it not to work. Um, but I can honestly say that sometimes through marriages, when if you can't, uh, we, we couldn't seem to like work things out. Um, if you're not careful, you can let that word come up, you know, well, if we can't work things out, maybe we just need to, you know, go our own separate ways. And through, um, several times, I mean, uh, there's been times when the Lord just showed me to take that word right out of my vocabulary. Me and Tracy don't have that in our vocabulary. Yeah, That's what never said it. We just shouldn't yeah. be in your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Never um, come out of my mouth. Yeah, and then uh, there's been several times when I've almost, uh, I did, well, question, I've only been separated once uh, through that 43 years of being married, um, but I just never could let it go. I didn't, like, it, like, there were parts of, like, my flesh that wanted to, like, if I thought about things we were going through, it, but when I really would be to myself, that's not what I wanted, and when we would discuss it, I would say, that's not what I want. I just feel like I'm being pushed in a corner, and that, that I'm not being left with any uh, choice to do it, but every time I would think I would go through it, God mm. would give, would, go. would, I would hear a message so let's say, say right now someone comes to you and they're like, I'm having trouble in my marriage. Um, I want to stay married, but I'm having trouble. What do you say to them right now? I would say to pray. Come on. Because, <laughs> um, you know, the thing is, Absolutely. is that um, if your husband is struggling, you need to pray for him. If your wife is struggling, you need to pray for her because God says he answers the prayers of the saints. And um, I think that a lot of times when we're in the flesh or we're walking in the flesh or we're going through troubles, that's the last thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very hard to work out your problems if you can't come together and let God be in the middle of your marriage. Amen. Come on. All right, All man. Right. Mm -hmm. Sandra. We appreciate you. Appreciate you, Pastor. You're 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 the first person that people come across when they walk in the doors of Joy Church. And you're there with a smile and a hug and you know what? We appreciate you. And you know what? Don't ever don't ever think lightly of the suit you know, the supernatural power of greeting someone, the supernatural power. Mm -hmm. You're a gatekeeper. The hug. You can change you can change someone's before someone even hears the word or gets an opportunity to worship and minister to the Lord, you can change their whole perspective of how they enter into his courts and to his gates yeah. and to his courts with praise uh, simply through just being nice. <laughs> being nice, amen. Well, and Supernatural being, power yeah, being it's nice. Being, we uh, need to do it, yeah. It's being genuine. But it's genuine. You know, the Lord yeah. showed me that. I mean, um, authentic. I, when, when my dad passed away and, and everything and I was at Joy Church, um, I just wanted to love people. 
I just wanted to love on them. I, if I hugged somebody, I wanted it to be a genuine hug. Yeah. If it was a smile, I wanted it to be genuine. But you know what? I had no idea in the spirit what it did. The Lord showed me one night with uh, Patricia, and I cried all the way home. I go, I can't. Oh, wow. That I was just like blown away because she just came out one night at a prayer meeting at um, Kayla's house. And she just turned to me, I guess, because the Lord wanted me to know um, and not take it lightly, the depth that it was to hug and love on somebody. And she just told me that the reason she stayed at Joy was because of that. Every part of the body is vital. Mm -hmm. Every part of the body is valuable, necessary for the accomplishment of the fullness of what God wants to do in the earth. Amen. All right. Love you, Sander. Come on. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. All right. Come on. Amen. We're going to play that bass now. Listen, you ready? I love the bass. So does the crowd. I love the bass. Y'all may not know that we had a live crowd today. Sarah, good to see you this evening. Amen. Amen. <laughs>